My name is Yasmin Kumi. Um, I started my business when I was 27 years old and my big belief is that we can build a better global private sector by putting Africa at the heart of it. Um, everything I do in my career is about figuring out how I can pave the way for African businesses to be global players. And I believe by doing that, uh, I can help build a future, a global future, that is hopefully more equitable and allows everyone to live in prosperity. Mm -hmm. Africa Foresight Group uh, promotes foresight, of course, that's why we're called Africa Foresight Group. Um, but at the core, Af Africa Foresight Group, or AFG as we like to say, um, is an ecosystem builder. Um, we are really about um, building platforms that promote access to finance, access to talent and expertise for homegrown companies across the African continent. And our mission statement is that we can build African people and companies into global champions. So it's really about any type of network platform that we can build uh, to promote that goal. Um, examples of things that we do today um, include our African Hidden Champions program, um, a big collaboration uh, that we have pulled off together with some DFIs such as the African Development Bank, DEG, to really find top mid-sized businesses across Africa and support them on their quest to global leadership. Um, we also run a platform called Peralta uh, that allows African businesses, again from across the continent, to tap into a pool of hundreds of um, top uh, business advisors that can support them with short and long term uh, projects in the gig economy model. And we also run training programs for young graduates that are looking to become freelancers and support businesses across the continent with their expertise and talent. So really anything that can get our goal delivered to build African companies into global champions. We all know that there's a lot of potential in Africa. Um, having said that, we haven't necessarily built good support systems for really putting our homegrown businesses on the map. Um, Africa is the only continent that doesn't have a single Fortune Global 500 company. I'm sure we are familiar with that ranking, the top 500 businesses across the world that are making billions of dollars of revenues. I think the smallest business on that ranking uh, makes $20 billion in revenue. Uh, in comparison to that, Dangote Group, which many of us know, uh, makes maybe six or seven billion dollars in revenue today. So even Dangote would have to double uh, in size to even make it into that ranking. And we know that we have a job creation shortage in Africa. Um, currently, we uh, have a 6x gap between the supply and demand for jobs, and it's growing. So if we don't manage to find a good way of really filling that gap where businesses get structured and long-term support to grow into those big global businesses and create, that create thousands, uh, thousands or ten thousands of jobs, we will not see a very prosperous future on this continent. And that's really what drives me. I'm African, I'm a global citizen. I have my roots in, in Ghana and Germany, uh, but I identify as African. And um, I believe that we as, as diasporans and top talent have to come home and support building this continent. So there's certainly a very important personal connection. Um, but I also think that Africa is the last frontier. And if you look at the global industrialization and growth story of the world over the last 200 years, we have to be honest with ourselves that there's no part of the world that's necessarily evolved and achieved prosperity um, in a sustainable fashion. And we're seeing that now, right? When we talk about climate change, or also if we think about many Western markets having built their economic prosperity out of uh, slave trade and colonialism, <laughs> right? So for me, when I was growing up, when I was in university, for me the big question mark always was, okay, what could be a way for Africa to achieve prosperity uh, without also having to, you know, uh, exploit other parts of the world? I think we are the last frontier when it comes to showing that you can achieve a pathway of prosperity that is sustainable and equitable. Mm -hmm. And um, as much as that's a really, really tough quest, I believe that young people like me have to be at the forefront of the fighting that battle and winning it. So um, that's really why I'm excited to dedicate my career to this continent. Mm -hmm. how, how many countries? Um, I mean, look, we, we, we believe in Pan-Africanism. Uh, I'm, I'm Ghanaian. Uh, you know, our, our godfather of Ghana, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, was one of the flag bearers of Pan-Africanism. And uh, our entire business model promotes that. Um, we believe in being a borderless company. Um, we look at Africa as one market and one people. 
Um, but if you force me to talk about, <laughs> about <laughs> countries and borders, I would say that we've been active in about 25 markets across Africa, um, with a bit of a focus on sub-Saharan Africa. At the moment, we're trying to see how we can expand more into northern Africa as well. I encounter the same challenges that any entrepreneur encounters, but I also think that's important because my quest is to support other entrepreneurs. So what better way could I find of um, supporting them unless I have the same challenges? <laughs> um, of course, you know, there's an interesting um, access to finance challenge. Um, we are a venture capital funded business to an extent because some of the platforms we run are technology enabled. Um, of course, the markets have changed very, very uh, swiftly over the last 24 months when it comes to fundraising. Um, and even if you're more like traditional business that is into manufacturing, uh, the rise of interest rates, I mean, interest rates were at 0% for a long time and now they're really high, um, has totally changed the access to debt capital, not just equity capital, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, the interesting thing is I don't necessarily believe that Africa is underfinanced in that sense. Um, there's a lot of um, finance earmarked for Africa. The problem we often have is that the uh, financing requirements are not um, possible to meet by the businesses that are looking for financing. Maybe when it comes to margins or return and exit times that investors are looking for. And I really believe that that is one of the key gaps that we need to address. Um, I spent a lot of time in South Korea when I was younger um, because I was very interested in the growth trajectory of South Korea. South Korea and Ghana were at the same uh, GDP per capita level in the 1950s. Um, so they've often been compared in terms of how they kind of diverged in, in pathways and economic prosperity achievements. Um, South Korea had negative interest loans for companies like Samsung for almost two decades, <laughs> right? Um, so one thing that I really like looking at is how can we like, decrease the gap in terms of the demand and supply of financing? Because I think that's really the issue. And um, the African Union Champions Program that I mentioned earlier um, is also looking to uh, leave a mark on that eventually, right? Because um, we think that once you build a pipeline of really top businesses that have a lot of growth opportunity and a healthy success story at home, we can hopefully have the conversation and see how they can hopefully get single digit interest loans instead of having to pay, dou pay double digit because that way you can't grow. African Hidden Champions is um, a very, very exciting and um, unique initiative. Um, it's really about filling that void of mid-sized businesses that have already achieved credible success at home in becoming global leaders. And there's no such dedicated initiative in Africa right now. But if we want to really see our economy be globally successful, uh, that is what we have to do. We have to see how a $100 million business can become a $10 billion business. And that's really what African Hidden Champions is about. Um, for me, this is kind of a culmination of a lot of the things that we believe in AFG as an ecosystem player. But I'm also very grateful that it's a co-founded initiative that was developed together with DEG, which is the German Investment Corporation, and now also the African Development Bank. Mm -hmm. To become an African Hidden Champion, you need to have a mid-sized business scale. Mm -hmm. So the absolute minimum revenue criterion is $20 million in revenue per annum. Uh, can be in local currency equivalent, but you have to have a certain top line size. Um, we have businesses in the program that are as big as $500 million in revenue per year. Um, but anything goes in between uh, those two figures. We also only work with businesses that have been operating for at least seven years. Uh, this is really about supporting established businesses that have already built a strong trajectory in their home market. Sometimes maybe they've also started expanding regionally. Um, so we have examples of such businesses as well. And um, what's also really important to us is that it's African businesses. Um, so this is really about supporting our homegrown business sector that has emerged on the continent and is often not talked about enough in our opinion. <laughs> because often when we talk about Africa and businesses today, it's about startups or MSMEs that are very small. But this is really about um, uh, scaled companies that are built by Africans. And so that's also a really important criterion to us. Um, this initiative uh, was only launched in 2020 in the middle of COVID. Um, so we've now been uh, running this for two and a half years, roughly. Um, we are currently uh, 40 companies in the network. We aim to grow to 100 companies by 2025, I believe. 
And um, with those companies, the story is always the same. The first step always is to support visibility. Uh, so how can we bring their stories out on a more international level? Because often these are businesses that have maybe built a strong brand at home, but are not as well known outside of their home borders. Um, an example is Edita Foods. Um, Edita Foods is a snack manufacturer in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, a very exciting business that has really been able to build a brand that is competitive with international um, snack brands that are active in Egypt. Um, when you walk around Egypt and ask anyone on the street, they will know Edita, and it's really the pride of a lot of Egyptians. Um, but if you live in Ghana or South Africa, you never have heard of Edita. So our first step is really to build that global brand recognition and say, let's shoot videos, let's write about them and see how we can promote the stories on the rest, in the rest of the continent and also globally, get them in top media outlets and really show how exciting this business is. Mm -hmm. And you know, for, for a company, it's important to have this visibility because um, you know, when you're for instance, looking to raise funds, be it debt or equity, these things drive perception and what value people see in your business. So visibility is one big uh, leg of our contribution to success stories of the one like Edita. Um, but we also support with um, growth services to help expand new market into new markets. Um, maybe a company in Sudan says that they want to go to West Africa. So they can leverage the African Hidden Champions Network to speak to other founders that are active in those markets. And they can also get access to technical assistance services in order to for instance, run feasibility studies when they want to go to Nigeria or Ghana or Ivory Coast. Um, so really trying to see how we can de-risk the expansion opportunities that our companies want to look at so that they can confidently explore them and grow faster. You know, I think what's important is that we find our own niche. And um, a lot of the businesses that we have in the African Hidden Champions program are companies that have found their unique success recipes. And I think what's important when you look at um, Africa being our global business future really is to find more innovations and alternative ways of doing business or building products and services that have global relevance. I believe one big uh, conversation that we all read about almost daily at the moment is the conversation about climate change and net zero. Um, and again, there's like a very simple answer to this when you ask me, well, if you ask me, right? Um, uh, we have a chocolate manufacturer in Ghana in our network, for example. Also very exciting business, has been around for 15 years, uh, became a $200 million plus revenue company and processes more than 12% of all of Ghana's cocoa output. Um, but if you look at the climate change impact of that, it's interesting, right? Because once you semi-process cocoa beans, they lose 90% of their weight. So if I process at home before I export, I reduce the carbon emissions from all of these shipments significantly. And um, I think that's a very nice example to show how Africa is going to be the global business future because if we manage to process a lot more at home, that can also reduce carbon emissions from the logistics sector, which is a really important emitter in the global carbon emissions conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're really interested in is, is trying to put out more of these stories and make these opportunities more central to our conversations about what we should be investing in in Africa and how we can support businesses like this chocolate manufacturer. I think my advice is to trust the process. Um, I, I believe that we sometimes have a wrong perception that you have a plan when you start and all you do is to deliver that plan. I didn't really have a plan. I think what I had was passion for a problem that I'm really willing to spend a lot of my lifetime on. And when things get difficult, that's what you, you know, derive your energy from. Um, I didn't really have the same plan when I started that I have now. Um, I had to learn, I had to explore the market, I had to try and error, and I had to learn to enjoy that process too. <laughs> um, so I, I really think that um, uh, we sometimes have a bit of a wrong perception that it's all about you know, raising money for a great plan and delivering the plan. Your plan will be involve, evolving almost on an annual basis as your market changes, as your competition changes, and also as you change as an entrepreneur. Um, so if you trust that process and you trust yourself, then you're probably going to get a long way.